As long as I'm drawing breath on this earth, I will defend American exceptionalism. So as I've been thinking about when I would deliver some news to the Senate, I always imagined a moment when I had total clarity and peace about the sunset of my work. A moment when I'm certain I have helped preserve the ideals I so strongly believe. That day arrived today. My goals when I was narrowly elected to the Senate back in 1984 were fairly modest. Do a good job for the people of Kentucky and convince them that by doing so they might rehire me for a second term. That was it. That was the plan. If you would have told me 40 years later that I would stand before you as the longest serving Senate leader in American history, frankly, I would have thought you'd lost your mind. I have the honor of representing Kentucky in the Senate longer than anyone else in our state's history. I just never could have imagined, never could have imagined that happening when I arrived here in 1984 at 42. I'm filled with heartfelt gratitude and humility for the opportunity. But now it's 2024. I'm now 82. As Ecclesiastes tells us, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. To serve Kentucky in the Senate has been the honor of my life. To lead my Republican colleagues has been the highest privilege. But one of life's most underappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next chapter. So I stand before you today, Mr. President, and my colleagues to say this will be my last term as Republican leader of the Senate. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I'll complete my job my colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November and they take the helm next January. I'll finish the job the people of Kentucky hired me to do as well, albeit from a different seat, and I'm actually looking forward to that. So it's time for me to think about another season. I love the Senate, it's been my life. There may be more distinguished members of this body throughout our history, but I doubt there were any with any more admiration for the Senate. After all this time, I still got a thrill walking into the Capitol, and especially on this venerable floor, knowing that we, each of us, have the honor to represent our states and do the important work of our country. But Father Time remains undefeated. I'm no longer the young man sitting in the back hoping colleagues would remember my name. It's time for the next generation of leadership. As Henry Clay said in this very body in 1850, the Constitution of the United States was not made merely for the generation that then existed but for posterity, unlimited, undefined, endless, perpetual posterity. So time rolls on. There'll be a new custodian of this great institution next year. Won't surprise you to know I intend to turn this job over to a Republican majority leader. I have full confidence in my conference to choose my replacement and lead our country forward. There'll be other times to reminisce, 
I'm immensely proud of the accomplishments I've played some role in obtaining for the American people. Today is not the day to discuss all of that, because as I said earlier, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. There are many challenges we must meet to deliver for the American people, and each will have my full effort and attention. I still have enough gas in my tank to thoroughly disappoint my critics, and I intend to do so with all the enthusiasm with which they've become accustomed. So to my colleagues, thank you for entrusting me with our success. It's been an honor to work with each of you. There'll be plenty of time to express my gratitude in greater detail as I sprint towards the finish line, which is now in sight. I yield the floor.